All right, we're now joined by Brandon Gibbs, lead singer, rhythm guitarist at Devil City Angels. How are you today, Brandon? I'm doing good. How are you guys? Doing fantastic, man. We're loving this new album. Of course, we go way back with Mr. Rocket and Mr. Guns and Mr. Sarzo. So you are the uh, missing ingredient, man. We need to get brought up to date on how all this came about and, you know, this amazing new band. You know, uh, being a fan of music for 40, 50 years now is just um, great to see the evolution, you know, of technology and all that, but it really comes down to great songs and great performances, and that's what we love about Devil City Angels. So if you could let our viewers and listeners know a little bit about your background, what, um, you know, where where did you grow up, and, you know, who were some of your musical heroes that kind of led you into want to play music yourself, and how this all evolved? Well, I'm, I was actually known more as a guitar player, um, uh, and I, I started out with a band called the Gibbs Brothers, my twin brother and I, um, at about age 13. And um, we, we had that band for uh, roughly 10 years, which is how I met um, Ricky. We opened up for, uh, we're actually, him and I are traveling together uh, today. We're, we opened up for the uh, Poison and just kind of um, kept a friendship with uh, Ricky throughout the years. And we would check in on each other, do some demos from time to time. And, um, when my, I, my band Cheap Thrill came back from Europe, I was, you know, really hoping f for a change and, um, to do something maybe original and, uh, kick out, you know, some more music that I, I, I had written. And literally I told the guys from Cheap Thrill that I was, uh, gonna, gonna move on. And, um, and I'm five minutes later, Ricky shot me a text message and it said, you know, hey, what do you think about you, me, Tracy Guns, and you know, writing and and possibly putting this band together? And and I said, great. And he goes, well, Tracy's going to call you tonight. And Tracy called me. He's like, hey, man, well, you know, let's let's write some music. Let's play some songs. Let's you know, let's put this band together. And so that's really kind of how it, it all happened. And uh, at the time, Eric Brittingham was our bass player. Him and I flew out to Los Angeles. We just um, hung out at the studio that Steve Vai has and, and Tracy was renting and just kind of hit push the play button and uh, we started with a song that I'd done with Rocket uh, and and my brother Brent 10 or 11 years ago called All My People and we just instantly hit play did, a, did two songs flew home and um, we actually booked a tour and within maybe two weeks of that tour our band uh, got signed so that's that's kind of how we all got together, and then after uh, Eric left, Tracy introduced us to uh, uh, Rudy Sarzo, who was excited to to come aboard. He did the music video with us, and that's that's kind of the intro of Devil to the Angels. Wow, well that's that's amazing stuff, and I and I know you know a lot of uh, musicians grew up you know playing covers and you know learning what a great song is all about, but then having to you know, really write them on their own, that's always a challenging thing. But um, you, you guys have a great batch of songs, and, you know, um, as as metal has gotten a, a lot heavier and guys are, are screaming and, you know, the sounds are all trying to out-heavy each other, it's refreshing right. to hear you guys because, you know, growing up with the greats of, Cheap Trick and the Alice Cooper Band and, you know, so so many straight-ahead hard rockin' bands, the Aerosmiths and all that over the years. It's good to hear some good singing and, and good playing again. What, uh, yeah. what what are your feelings how DCA fits into the, uh, the, the, the musical landscape out there? Well, you know, every, you know, the band actually kind of, um, we kind of tip our hat towards our influences. And uh, as, as much as, um, as much as I like you know, the, some of the screaming metal and stuff like that, it's not necessarily, um, sorry, Ricky's got, <laughs> Ricky's got a, a dancing cartoon uh, character of him on his phone right now. He's trying to make me laugh through this interview. But uh, as much as, as much as I like, you know, I like working out to that stuff and I appreciate the people that can do it. You know, we definitely wanted to go back to our influences and um, and Ricky and I kind of have a, our ear to the ground on what's going on in the pop world, so I think that has a lot to do with some of the hooks that we put together um, in these songs. And I'm a blues-based guy, um, you know, and so it just 
it it just kind of it's it, to me it's a very kind of a current rock record. I I just I like the way the direction that it's going. Good hooks, you know, harmonies. We're not afraid to explore that. Um, you know, so it's just it, a tip of our hat to their influences. Kind of a '70s sound a little bit, yep. but uh, with a current pop hook on uh, on on you know the choruses and stuff. That's kind of the way we uh, are, are trying to keep our our writing styles. Yeah, well, like like we say, you know, a good a great song never goes out of fashion. You can listen to some of those bands from the '70s, and you couldn't tell they weren't recorded last week. You know, right. that that's what's really great about your band. And of course, we uh, we go way back with uh, with Ricky and Tracy and and Rudy. Now, Rudy being the latest addition of the band, I mean, to have such a stellar, you know, uh, bass player who's played with. Ozzy Osbourne with his best friend Randy Rhodes, and to come through those years of Quiet Riot being the number one album in the in sure. the Billboard charts, and of course coming through everything else he's done from Blue Oyster Cult to Dio, and you name it. I always joke with Rudy. I think he's played in every band and with every musician on the planet. But you know he is um, excited about the band and. You know, we just interviewed him recently. Uh, talk about yeah. what it's like to have such a stellar veteran, you know, excited about what you're doing and want to make that commitment. You know, Rudy's done he's done a fantastic job just just showing up and being a team player. And uh, anything we ask him to do, you know, he he's more than willing. And you know, he it's you know we 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 have not played a note of music with Rudy yet, and he still shows up like he was in the band from you know from the the ground up. So. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I get, you know, I get, I love telling people you won't believe who our, who our new bass player is. It's Rudy Sarzo and, and his history, and he's a sweet guy, and he's, he's um, you know, he's a pleasure to be around. I'm looking forward to getting on a, a, a tour with Rudy and, and just hearing some more of his stories, actually. So, um, you know, we're very pleased, and his attitude is amazing, and uh, we, we couldn't have picked a better bass player, you know, to... to uh, to take Eric's place, really, it's it's perfect. Well, and and you said it right there. You know, he he he's a great guy. You know, there's a lot of incredible players out there. There's some animals on on their instruments and all that. But a lot of this is is touring, long distance in in a in a van or a bus or in a hotel room. Or there's a lot of time in between the takes in the studio. And you know, right. talk about how important it is to have a person that's well grounded in a in a good person almost as much if not more than just a great player. You know, just I mean, I get excited about um, you know, writing and recording with Rudy because uh, his presence is just like, you know, it it's so welcomed. I mean, you want to be around the guy and um and you know, hear his stories and ideas and uh he's he you know, he'll compliment you and it's just a it's a nice it's a kind of, it kind of brings the whole brotherhood back into, you know, the, the band. It's like, I want to text Rudy, you know, every couple of weeks and just say, Hey man, how you doing? You know, uh, you know, I just keep in touch. I want to tweet him. He'll tweet me back. And you know, that, that, that was what was always exciting about being in a band with me is being in a band with, you know, brothers, you check on them and you have each other's back. And, um, so, you know, that's really important. And when I get into a rehearsal, I don't want the, the tense, like, feeling of, oh my God, this is, you know, back to work. It's like, this is what we're here to do. We're here to create and let's try this idea. And you feel like you can probably just go ahead and bounce anything off of him and he'll, you know, with his history and, and his uh, knowledge, he'll give you, he'll give you a chance and, or maybe turn it into something better. So that's how I feel about Rudy. I just can't, I can't wait, you know, to, to get out on the road with him. Yeah. Well, that's, that, that's, you say a lot right there, you know, and, and the, the the band is so balanced, you know. You being from the heartland of America, of course, Ricky being from the East Coast, Tracy growing up on the streets of Hollywood here, and, and Rudy originally yeah. being from, you know, Cuba and, and and Miami, you know, via California. You know, you've definitely got a uh, a band with a lot of roots across the the nation. And and I know you grew up loving, you know, BB King and Allman Brothers and music that came from the heartland. And when I talk to a lot of the great British bands, I don't care if it's Led Zeppelin, the Stones, or the Who, or whatever, um, as, as many bands as those guys influenced, 
when you talk to them, you realize all their heroes were the American, you know, blues guys, the the Willie Dixons, the Muddy Waters, the Chuck Berries, the Little Richards, the right. Jerry Lee Lewis. What 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 does it mean to uh, have have that legacy, you know, in the heartland of America to uh, you know really kind of build upon and and be out there waving a the flag for it? You know, those artists. Um, one thing I learned from is is their passion for what they do. And, uh, you know, like Stevie Ray Vaughan, I mean, you just, you know, you, you just, you, you feel, you, you feel every note that the guy plays. I mean, it's, it's, you know, I was always out with the Doobie Brothers and George Thorogood and, and uh, bands like that, you know. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I kind of, I kind of got a, uh, a feel with that music before I went to the, the heavy, uh, the heavy rock, you know, stuff that we're doing. So, um you know, I I like starting out. I started out on that, and I feel like it contributes to the record. And you know, that that's what my contribution. You know, and uh, the blues, the earthy sound, and um, love that, love that. You know, that's the Midwest. That kind of you know, I go back to the Doobie Brothers. I mean, that's that's a band of brothers. That's what I really like about you know that. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. It's it's that Musketeers, one for all, all for one, and no matter where where they set up, man, they're going to deliver, you know. And it's um, it's certainly built, you know, um, American, you know, rock to the to the history books, you know. Like I say, of these pioneering um, characters. And why is it important while some of these um, legendary pioneers of rock and roll are still alive, like a Chuck Berry or Little Richard or Jerry Lee Lewis, for us to show, show them the love? You know, it seems like a lot of people come out and lay flowers on on somebody's star on the boulevard or or their tombstone later but i i always find it very very important to let these guys know that you know they're appreciated and everything that we're doing today really goes back to the doors that they opened and the and the trails that they blazed so why why is it kind of important for us to show show these you know guys that are still alive because they once they're gone, I mean that these these were the fathers of rock and roll, and sometimes they kind of feel like they're forgotten. Why is it important for us to show them some love while they're still on the planet? Uh, you know, because if it wasn't for them, I mean, I I would never have. Uh, I, I wouldn't. You know, I, I feel like I can go. I can jump in a song with you know with not knowing the song because I listen to BB King and. And um, you know, and in his phrasing, it's like, okay, this song's in C. All right, you know, what would BB do here? I mean, he would, he'd, he'd be tasteful and get the note, you know, get throw a note in there when he when he could, and um, you know, and it, and it sent chills up and down your spine. You know, that's, you know, and, and his touring, you know, early on is was not what you know we're used to. I mean, pool tables as your bed and stuff mm-hmm. like that. I mean, they chicken wire they, uh, fence in front. Yeah, they. I mean, they they, they laid the they paved the way for for that and um you know eric clapton i mean that's just um my god i mean what a what an amazing uh story he has and hendrix and i mean elvis i mean they they all had they didn't it didn't just get handed to them they had to go up the rung and fight for absolutely everything that they they achieved and so it's important to let them know that you know we're we wouldn't be probably riding around first class or a tour bus or anything like that had i not learned how to play like you know, these guys. You know what I mean. They sure. they taught me so much, and and their passion behind um, what they do is, um, you know, it it's just they're they're legends. And uh, before anything, they stripped everything down. They didn't have pyro. They didn't have fog. They didn't have anything. It was just a give me a good show. Okay, I'm gonna do my best. Here we go. You know. Yes. Well, we're so excited about the new album, Boneyard, All My People. So many great songs. What are some of your other favorite songs on this album you can't wait to perform live for the people? Um, one of the songs I really like performing live is um, I'm Living. Uh, we had a, a, like Tracy and I did a, a guitar duo in that song, and uh, I had a really good time doing that. That's kind of That goes back a little bit to like Bo Diddley even. Um, it's, it, we kind of used a little bit of that, you know, uh, you know, uh, in in that song. So I really like doing I'm Living. We did a version, uh, a Susie Quattro song, believe it or not, called, uh, Devil's Gate Drive. And, uh, there's some really, really spooky, uh, haunting guitar solos and, and, uh, vocal melodies in that, that I, I can't wait to do live. 
the whole record from top to bottom. I mean, it, you know, Numb is a fun one that you just want to go, like, work out to. I mean, it, there's something in that record for everybody. No Angels is one of my... I like playing No Angels acoustically because the song tells a story, you know. Um, it, the whole record is kind of like, you know, a movie pretty much, and that's uh, that, that's kind of a cool way to look at it, really. Well, we can't wait to see it live, and, and, and I know you guys have... Uh... Gone, gone through so many travels to get to this point. You bring so much to the stage and every song you write and record. What what advice do you give to the young players, the young singers, the young garage bands out there that, you know, they, they, they love music, they, they want to do this? I know it's hard to give them, you know, business advice because the industry is constantly evolving, but as far as the level of dedication and the perseverance it takes to not only master your instrument, but be a student of the game of songwriting and and musicianship and performing. What what do you tell the you know the aspiring artists today? Um, you know, I George Thorogood one time told me he's like you know I I like you because you know you just you're not asking hey George how do you you know how do you make it you're just saying I I just I need to go figure it out basically you know and that's kind of. That's kind of what he told us. You want advice? I don't know what to tell you. I just had to get up out of the basement at my mom's house and go out there and hit, you know, and hit the bars and try it, hit the clubs. And, um, you know, there's so much product out there. I really couldn't, I couldn't point someone in the, the surefire right direction um, other than just, you know, if you're passionate about your vocals, you know, practice them. You know, practice the vocals, practice the guitar before you practice looking the part. Uh, a lot of times I see a lot of musicians, man, they really look the part, but they kind of got their guitar figured out. They kind of, you know, just get it down and, and, and be, you know, the cream of the crop, um, you know, before you master the look of everything. I think that's important, too. So um, just stay strong. If you believe it, you can you can absolutely go get it. You know, I'm a, you know, a guy from Iowa, uh, small town Iowa, singing for, you know, two of my favorite groups. So. Uh, I'm I'm proof that you can go get it if you want it. So just believe and work hard. That's that's pretty much it. Yeah, we talk a lot about the tortoise and the hare because there's a lot of hares out there that think you can click a mouse and and be at the finish line. But really, all you guys have been those turbocharged tortoises, man, making the moves slowly but steadily, moving along. And we always know who wins the race. So I think the perseverance and the dedication can never be overlooked. Absolutely. You said it best right there. Absolutely. Well, Brandon, it's our supreme pleasure. We've had a great time spreading the news on, on the new album. Devi, Devil City Angel is going to be out there tearing it up on the road. We can't wait to spread the news and, and see you out here on the road. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Hey, anytime. We'll talk to you guys soon.